itaratas chartesu avigyas varat tene brahma yudaya adikavaye muyantiyat surayaha tejo vari medam yata vinimayo yatra trisargo misha Dam na svina sada nirasta kuha kam satyam param di mahi. O oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh, all pervading personality of Godhead, or from my respectful basis, is unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primary cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Destruction, manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. You see, only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation. Of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Of water seen the fire, land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravutra. Dharma Projita Kaitravutra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shivadam Tapo Trayamuranam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kim Va Parir Ishwaraha. Kim Va Parir Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hridi Avurudite Tra. Sadyo Hridi Avurudite Tra. Krite Bihi Susu Subhistakshanat. Krite Bihi Susu Subhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold misery. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is itself sufficient? Uh, 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 it is self sufficient. Is it? Is it's, it's self? Yeah. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient in itself and for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What do they need of the other scriptures? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, as one attentively and submissively hears this, by this culture of knowledge, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Shukamukad amrita dravya sangitam. Shukamukad amrita dravya sangitam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mur aho rasika bhuvi bhavukaha. Mur aho rasika bhuvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. The mature fruit, the desire tree of Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sugadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sugadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. 
Although his nectar and juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shrinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shrinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtanam. Hridhyantas tohiya bhadrani vidu noti surit satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita Is it self-righteous activity It is self-righteous activity And for one who hears about Krishna And for one who hears about Krishna Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart Acts as the best wishing friend Acts as the best wishing friend And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him Nasta preesu bhadresu Nasta preesu bhadresu Nityam bhagavata sevaya Nityam bhagavata sevaya Bhagavati uttama sloke Bhagavati uttama sloke Bhakti bhavati naistiki Bhakti bhavati naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his transcendental dormant knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes devotees. fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamaloba dayasche. Kamaloba dayasche. Cheta etare navidam. Cheta etare navidam. Sitam sattve prasidati. Sitam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tat. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure becomes goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understand the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Siyante chasya karmani. Siyante sacha karmani. Drista evat manishwari. Drista evat manishwari. Thus bhakti yoga serves the heart not of material affection. Thus, Bhakti Yoga savors the hard note of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Un understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, Verse number 16. Saratya parasada saratya parasada sevana sakya dotya virasana nugamana stavana prananam snake day supandu su jagat Pranatim Chavishnur. Snig de Shupandu Sujagat Prananatim Vishnur. Bhaktim Karoti Nipatis Charanara Vinde. Bhaktim Karoti Nipati Charanara Vinde. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj Pariksit heard that out of his causeless mercy, Lord Krishna, Vishnu, who is universally obeyed, rendered all kinds of service to the malleable sons of Pandu by accepting posts ranging from chariot driver to president to messenger, friend, night watchman, etc., according to the will of the Pandavas, obeying them like a servant and offering obeisances like one younger in years. When he heard this, Maharaj Brikshit became overwhelmed with devotion to the lotus feet of the Lord, purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada.
Lord Krishna is everything to the unalloyed devotees like the Pandavas. The Lord was for them the Supreme Lord, the spiritual master, the worshipable deity, the guide, the chariot driver, the friend, the servant, the messenger, and everything they could conceive of. And thus, the Lord also reciprocated the feelings of the Pandavas. Maharaj Prikshit, as a pure devotee of the Lord, could appreciate the Lord's transcendental reciprocation of feelings of his devotees. And thus, he himself also was overwhelmed with the dealings of the Lord. Simply by appreciating the dealings of the Lord with his pure devotees, one can attain salvation. The Lord's dealings with his devotees appear to be ordinary human dealings, but one who knows them in truth becomes at once eligible to go back home, back to Godhead. The Pandavas were so malleable to the will of the Lord that they could sacrifice any amount of energy for the service of the Lord. And by such unalloyed determination, they could secure the Lord's mercy in any shape they desired. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So this is a very profound purport because it reveals the very intimate basis of, or the very intimate nature of the relationship between the devotee and Krishna. What is astounding is that when Krishna sees the sincere service of his devotee, he likes to subordinate himself and be under the protection, sometimes the guidance of his devotee. Now this is completely unheard of normally in, or this is unheard of in Vaikuntha, for example. And in the material world, the master-servant relationship is usually one of exploitation. But in the case of the Lord, he's a supreme master, but he becomes vulnerable to the pure de devotee and actually enjoys subordinating himself to the devotee. This is partially psychological. Uh, the like, for example, Prabhupada speaks about uh, Gladstone. He was the uh, prime minister of the entire British Empire at its peak in the 1880s, 1890s, when the sun never set on the British Empire. So the England and France had these crazy wars. They had a 100 years war, then they had a 30 years war. So at one point, the uh, representative of France came to England to talk to Gladstone about, look, let's, let's, let's stop these wars. And when he arrived in the, at the Buckingham Palace, uh, Gladstone's secretary told him, you have to wait. The, uh, the uh, prime minister is very busy in his office. So the... The Frenchman was waiting, and one hour goes by, two hours go by. So he asked the, the uh, secretary, what's going on? He said, I came here to stop a war, and he's uh, not talking to me. She said, no, no, he's very busy. It's very important business. Please wait, sir. So then she leaves the office for a second, and uh, the... Uh, French man becomes very impatient. So he goes and tries to peek into the room of Gladstone's office. And he sees that, that Gladstone is on the ground uh, with his hands and, and legs acting like a horsey. And his grandson is sitting on his back and kicking him in the ribs and saying, Grandpa, go faster, go faster. So <laughs> the Frenchman was amazed. He said, what is this? You know, it's the most powerful man in the world. And his little boy is kicking him in the ribs and telling him, go faster, playing horsey on him. So why would such a powerful man subordinate himself to his grandson? Well, 
out of love. So Prabhupada gives that example. Uh, you, you, you always start with the known to understand the unknown. To sort of let us have some idea of why Krishna would subordinate himself to his devotees. He subordinate, subordinates himself to Kunti Devi. He subordinates himself to Vasudeva. He subordinates himself to the Pandavas. So <clears throat> Maharaj Prakshit, hearing this about his uh, grand, uh, grandparents, or he's just amazed that Krishna would subordinate himself and act in a menial way, serving the Pandavas. So these are, this is like confidential knowledge of the Lord. And it's in advanced stages of devotional service that one can actually experience such things. Uh, and, but one cannot feign them or one cannot uh, artificially attain such a position. Such a position is only attained after many, many lifetimes of sincere service to the Lord. So we need to hear about this. And actually, in the, in the purport, Prabhupada says that, and thus the Lord also reciprocated the feelings of the Pandavas. Well, uh, this is extreme let's say, courtesy uh, based on love and devotion. Everybody has feelings. And oftentimes, uh, people don't really take account of those feelings of others. And, uh, but those people who are very attuned to other people's feelings and reciprocate them, they're considered very exceptional people. And when someone is not able to reciprocate the feelings of another person, that person becomes oftentimes resentful because uh, they can't imagine how boorish a person can be. That's a good word, boorish, B-O-O-R-I-S-H. It means insensitive and, and even up to the level of being cruel. So... People become hurt when another person can't reciprocate their feelings. Now well, we see that Krishna is the ultimate supreme personality of Godhead. And out of tremendous courtesy and actually out of love, he reciprocates the feelings of his devotees. And, and Prabhupada says, a pure devotee, uh, Maharaj Pariksit, as a pure devotee, of the Lord could appreciate the Lord's transcendental reciprocation of the feelings of his devotees. And thus he himself also was overwhelmed with the dealings of the Lord. Simply by appreciating the dealings of the Lord with his pure devotees, one can attain salvation. Janma karma chame divyam ivam yoveti tattvata tyakva deham punar janma naiti maameti sarjuna. So anyone who knows the transcendental nature of Krishna's appearance and activities does not, upon approaching death, take birth again, but goes back to Godhead. So that's what Prabhupada is saying here, uh, fourth chapter, verse number nine. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, or Arjuna. So we should be consider ourselves very lucky to be able to hear these things. You have to have real interest in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. And when you begin to hear these things, this uh, basically will melt the heart of a sensitive person. When they begin to understand to what lengths the Supreme Personality of Godhead will go to to reciprocate with his devotees. So simply by appreciating the dealings of the Lord with his pure devotees, one can attain salvation. The dealings, the Lord's dealings with his devotees appear to be ordinary human dealings, but one who knows them in truth becomes at once eligible to go back home, back to Godhead. 
the Pandavas were so malleable. Malleable means you can, uh, it's easily uh, molded. Were so malleable to the will of the Lord that they could sacrifice any amount of energy for the service of the Lord. And by such unalloyed determination, they could secure the Lord's mercy in any shape they desired. So this is all confidential knowledge. This is not meant for ordinary people to hear because they don't have, well, I'm not going to say all of them don't, but many people don't have the ability to even uh, conceive of such a relationship between God and his devotee. But devotees relish this. This is what, this is the real uh, nectar to the ears of the devotees when they hear about the wonderful mercy of the Lord. And Prabhupada said, if you want to use reason and logic to understand spiritual life, then use your reason and logic to try and understand the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now that's a very significant statement uh, because Lord Chaitanya was the most munificent avatar. Munificent means most generous, most uh, loving, most uh, kind, most merciful. Why? Because he didn't. When Krishna came, he asked people to surrender to him. When Lord Chaitanya came, he didn't ask anybody to surrender to him. He just said, "Let's just chant and dance together." So that's the special mercy of the Lord. He didn't make a precondition to receiving his mercy. And when uh, we begin to understand that, it's overwhelming. And one becomes very, very happy to surrender to such a person and dedicate their life to spreading the Sankirtan movement. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Are there any questions? Haribo, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, Hare Krishna.